Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. A lot of news and statements to cover today, and we should start with some of the overview of the front line. I'm going to do a dedicated video this week, but uh, in general, the situation in the front line is getting better. I know that it doesn't look so right now at the map, but importantly, I'm going to repeat it again and again and again, the help does not arrive right away. It's going to take time for Ukraine to get all of the equipment that they need to resist Russia. Uh, to put it in a perspective, the guys from the front line are stating that if before the help was announced that they were uh, shooting back about one artillery shell uh, on 10 Russian ones, so now the ratios are about for every... 10 Russian shells, there's three Ukrainians. It's not a precise science, but it explains the approximate balance. The main point here is that Ukrainians on the front lines are starting to receive the help that they need, and they will be able to resist Russians better. Russians are continuing advancing. They have their targets. General Sersky has been recently on the front lines, and he outlined that there are, in general, a couple of uh, points that Russia wants to achieve. Russia wants to get to Pokrovsk, Russia wants to get to Kurakhove, and Russia wants to get to Chasif Yar. Those are the three main targets of Russia. Most probably critical for them would be Pokrovsk, because that's kind of the heart of this sector of the Donbass defense. Kurakhove would allow Russia to basically kind of take the so southern part a little bit better. Chasif Yar is, is a gateway. Chasif Yar is a gateway further towards Kramatorsk and Slovyansk and this uh, part here. It's like a big uh, agglomeration of um, very urbanized environment. And this is like where the majority of people in the Ukrainian-controlled Donbass live. So all in all, right now Russia are advancing towards that direction, but they are not advancing nearly fast enough. And Ukrainians already are reporting that the situation is improving. And in general, we should expect some additional push by Russians if we can believe some of the statements that Ukrainian um, analysts and Ukrainian spokespeople are saying that Russia is preparing certain forces for their attack on the same directions. I am not fully confident because I also hear analysts that are contradicting this and saying that no, Russia is not doing this. But the main reason why Russia is still advancing is the aerial bombs. Um, I, I heard like an interesting statement from one of the analysts just, just recently. He says that about once every half a year, Ukraine and Russia almost completely change the type of war that is being fought. So the because of the way how adaptation on the front line works, it, it's usually the cycle is about half a year to maybe nine months where certain dominant weapon is getting a response to it. Uh, with certain ve weapon times, it's been uh, ups and downs. For example, most notable is drones. Uh, but the reality is that it's not; it hasn't been linear as well. Drones, while they were prevalent uh, force uh, for a while now, there has been also a lot of countermeasures against drones developed during these years. But there's also been a lot of adaptation on the drone front from the the Ukrainian and Russian sides as well. So we cannot just say that the drone warfare has been the same for the last half a year. So the adaptations are happening and they are happening. And about every half a year, certain things change. And for Ukrainian side, changes are relatively better. To give you a perspective, about last year, about this time, Ukrainians struggled a lot against the Russian helicopters. If you remember my reviews with regards to Ukrainian offensive, that the Russian helicopters were one of the worst things that was there for Russia, that Ukrainians just couldn't properly use their armored vehicles because they were always targeted by the Russian helicopters with night visions. And this was a huge problem. And over the last deliveries, over the Ukrainian adaptations and so on, we now almost don't see helicopters at the front lines. Helicopters has been pushed out, mostly because Ukrainians air, Ukrainian long-range air defenses have been buffed up. 
and uh, Attackham's uh, deliveries have been also there because for helicopters, they need to be closer to the front line and they need to have their supply facilities. They cannot just fly long distances and then go back. Right now, Russia is mostly using uh, helicopters for defensive prop properties uh, uh, purposes and we will get to that in a bit later. But most recent adjustments that Russia does with regards to the front lines is obviously the drones and how Russia is adopting the drones. So one of the way that they're doing it is obviously using the masking techniques. They are now trying to fortify and set up their artillery positions a little bit more concealed, something a little bit more permanent. But again, uh, this is something that maybe Ukrainian drones can work around. And that's uh, an obvious uh, thing. Most notably, drones is specifically a problem for Russians because Ukraine doesn't have, uh, did not have a lot of artillery munitions. For example, this one, I'm pretty sure we already discussed this scoop on the wheels that Russia is using, but Russia has been modifying their tanks and putting a lot of these anti-drones um, defenses on these tanks. It hinders the tanks significantly and hinders their ability to view around. But again, in the current warfare, this is the adaption that is required by Russians and they're doing this. Most notably because right now these tanks, they don't face any kind of other tanks. So we don't have any tank on tank actions. So maybe that field of view is not as relevant. And secondly, because Ukraine is mostly using drones to strike and not artillery, that means that the tank can use these uh, cages that are absolutely inefficient against uh, proper artillery uh, shells, but uh, it's working right now. This can be negated by delivering Ukraine uh, sufficient amounts of artillery shells, and then all of these coop tanks will be a lot less relevant. But because drones have been so prevalent in the last half a year for sure we're gonna see a lot of these adjustments this is normal so like what i want to say that this is a normal way of how the war goes it always goes in cycles drones will also improve and one of the way the drones are improving and where i mentioned that russia is using helicopters is that uh some time ago i was reporting that the naval drones that Ukraine has been using, they have been testing the uh, ability to mount a fire, uh, firing uh, weapon on top of these uh, drones. And here we see that Ukraine was able to mount the uh, air-to-air -air missile. I don't know why it's air-to-air, -air, but uh, let's go for this, on the drones. And we see that one of the missiles was already launched while the second one is still remaining. Like if you can look here, you see that only one missile is, is uh, on the drone. The other slot is just empty. So we, we now see that these drones have missiles and there has been a strike against the Russian ships during the night, which is all fine and good. And I'm glad that Ukraine is using. But the main part is that these missiles are now there to fight the Russians, because so far what was happening was is really well uh, shown on this video right here. It's released by Russians, but Russia has been using helicopters to hunt these uh, naval drones and shoot them down by the helicopters, uh, therefore reducing the effectiveness of these uh, these drones. And I was considering whether or not Ukraine will start de deploying the anti-air weapons on these drones, and we see indeed that they have. Now, uh, I don't know the range, I don't know how the drone should be located, so we shouldn't be like looking at this and saying, oh my God, it's completely inefficient. It's all a process of adoption, ad adaptation and change. So maybe right now the drone still cannot fight back, despite the fact that they're having the missile on top of them, but give it time and we'll see Russian helicopters being downed by the naval drones of Ukraine, which is an incredible development. And I'm looking forward to see how this will be growing forward. But with regards to additional uh, the developments to the anti-drone warfare, we've seen some of the new prototypes from the German, I believe it is German productors, producers of the Boxer RCT. It's the infantry fighting vehicle, new kind. It is supposed to be delivered to Ukraine. And let's just say th this is a presentation video, right? So we should give it some slack. 
but I gotta be honest, I wasn't really sold, right? So it shows that there is like the screen and the operator can use the main cannon, that there is like additional targeting assist to fight the drones. But I mean, these are clearly very, very slow flying drones. They are very, very big. They are also lying, <laughs> flying in a line. And I mean, it feels like this is a sh shooting ducks. So this is obviously a demonstration rather than test. So uh, very interesting. I'm a little bit discouraged that they're using the main cannon of the vehicle to shoot down the drones, that there is no maybe some kind of active defense against the drones. But still, it's uh, it's great to see that maybe Ukraine will get these more sophisticated vehicles that have already been built to adjust to the new type of warfare that is right now present on the front lines with aerial threats, specifically local small area threats being uh, so crucial. So good things to know and hopefully these uh, boxers can make it uh, to a series production very very soon and get delivered to Ukraine as fast as possible but what is being delivered to Ukraine uh, is equipment from the West now I've mentioned already that it takes certain time to to get delivered here we see a video by a very very unsatisfied Paul if you will see this uh, video then he's calling uh, Ukrainians in the slurs uh, not a very nice person at all but he did film uh, that the Bradleys and other fighting vehicles and equipment is being transferred to Ukraine interesting in a desert camo so they haven't been uh, colored yet as well some of them so it, th that's the the part so the help is coming to Ukraine the equipment is being rolled in daily as we speak and that's why you can kind of count from here so as if they are being delivered right now that means uh, maybe there were already brigades trained for this so brigades will take maybe additional a week two weeks or so to get accustomed to the new vehicles and most probably exactly as i was stating that by the end of june we will see ukrainians being reinforced with the weapons in significant enough numbers for this uh, russian onslaught to be stopped and we're pro processing to the topic that i i am very very eager to not eager to talk about mostly because it's very annoying because i repeated this time and time again we hear i i propose here from the italy side uh, that the peace talks with putin's uh, should be a must and so on that uh, he talks about that the west needs to be more um aligned to try to find a way how they can approach Putin despite the fact that Putin has shown zero interest in peace talks. Uh, he does say later that they, he still supports fully the supply of weapons to Ukraine, but I want to underscore that this is a sick mentality that we're still struggling with our current politicians. There is no peace talk. We, we, we need to stop thinking about peace at all costs. We need to stop considering any kind of stopped shooting as a success. It is not. The only peace that we should be working towards is a just peace. If we state, for example, that, okay, let just Russia have uh, what they conquered, and then maybe, you know, Ukraine kind of gets, uh, firstly, like, Ukraine will not get into NATO, but let, let's just not go that world route. Let's just try to imagine that, okay, let's try to offer whatever is left of Ukraine to NATO uh, and imagine that it did get accepted by all of the countries and no objections to this, because remember, everyone needs to vote for Ukraine to join NATO. But we're still going to live in a shittier world after this. If we don't get a just peace if we just get some kind of a peace or maybe a temporary ceasefire the only thing that we will show is we're gonna come to a dangerous world where dictators are encouraged and say that as like if you are aggressive enough if you are fast enough and if you can keep it up for long enough then at some point there will be people in the western world the politicians 
that will cave in so right now we took ukraine next time we're gonna take i don't know georgia kazakhstan next time it's gonna be south korea when north korea invades because then the they can uh, align their technologies all together and north korea is not gonna be this backward state but suddenly they will have russian uh, space program available to them then suddenly we get iran that is dominating the, the areas around and then we find ourselves like in weird uh, middle eastern uh, fight again so we're gonna be living in a lot more shittier world like it's a such a bizarre message to still consider t over two years in and listening to every time on what putin is projecting to towards the western world because their projection haven't changed you know recently the uk uh, foreign minister david cameron uh, he stated that uh, ukraine is a, should be allowed to strike uh, um, targets inside of the Russia proper which by the way by the Russian constitution there is no change between Russia because it's all Russia Crimea is Russia the four regions that Russia still doesn't control are also Russia so technically by the Russian constitution the war that is happening right now is on territory of Russia so striking on targets inside of the other Russia I guess is not what's in Russian constitution is because this is all a farce and the only thing that they can obviously come back to is like oh we're gonna strike and nuke you and whatnot guys this is all bullshit it's absolute garbage there has been nothing new Russia understands only force Russia understands only aggressiveness they will never back down every time that uh, uh, there is any time to walk back they will just threaten again and they will try to see that you back down russia is not a proper party to negotiate the only way that they're being so cocky right now the only way that they're able to start ha 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 we're gonna strike the and this is by the way this is not propagandist this is from the official russian uh, foreign affairs uh, ministry the main part why they're doing this is because the last half a year we've been cocking ukraine we've been really really unsure about whether or not we need to support ukraine the more hesitation there are in our midst the more russians are like okay so then if we just like try to uh, ruffle off our pe feathers and, and just appear to be bigger than we actually are because russia will never strike nato it's like Putin knows that it's the death sentence like don't let's not get there it's absolutely clear that NATO will absolutely wipe out Russia no chances but they will still do it just because that's how they do no falling back no steps back we need to move forward we need to be strong against this adversity Russia started this aggressive war in Europe we need to put them back in the place if we want a safe and prosperous peace going forward for the whole world but Ukraine is also working very very hard to build this narrative the peace that needs to be done I always talk about the just peace and one thing for me on the, as a YouTuber try to explain the difference between a just or an unjust peace and there has been many politicians that talked about this such as for example Kaya Kallas uh, she talked very extensively about this she said that after the second world war uh, it, there was a peace in UK and there was a supposedly peace in Estonia but was Estonia having it as a just peace no it was occupied the whole nation got prosecuted the culture was uh, moving towards being uh, extinguished and uh, uh, destroyed it's a miracle that it perceived over uh, persisted over the uh, 60 years of uh, occupation it's it's incredible that the baltic states and the baltic nations have been able to keep their history the tradition inside of the sovietization period and i am i am really hoping that the image of just peace will be delivered by president zelensky the summit is going to happen in uh, switzerland and i think it's a great first step to start building this proper narrative of what is a just peace and what we should move towards to make sure that the world is back to the proper state it should be but there are certain things that where comments should not be made 
most notably Jake Sullivan. He recently, and I, I having issues a lot with Jake Sullivan and his proposals on how to deal with Russia. But I think the most important here is Jake Sullivan needs to shut up about Ukrainian offensive. Uh, and it's not just Jake Sullivan. Everyone needs to shut up about Ukrainian offensive. Ukraine has been in a very, very dire position for the last over six months. It's been very devastating for Ukrainians. And I hear sometimes these weird narratives uh, where people that are armchair analysts like myself, except uh, maybe less delved in into situation, and they are discussing, talking about, oh my God, in the last half a year, the line of the contact between Ukraine and Russia almost didn't change. Therefore, Ukraine needs to go to negotiate. We already talked about negotiation with Putin and how useless it is because Putin has violated every single agreement that there was ever signed with him. Any agreement is not better than the toilet paper or even like used toilet paper with Russia. It's You, you cannot trust a single word they say. But more importantly, it also shows us that we need to repeat the message that for Ukraine to fight against Russia, it needs resources. Because otherwise, we get into this self-fulfilling prophecy mode where we don't give resources to Ukraine. Ukraine doesn't have resources to fight Russia, to get the victories, to show us that they can fight and then we don't give even more resources to Ukraine and that's that's a problem and this is specifically why I always always underline that the Ukrainian summer offensive last year was a failure because the message was so loud that they are going to achieve a lot and they delivered so little that it is crucial for Ukraine we're now happily in post of that mm, Rec reclamation period ukraine now get another chance at this it is now up to ukrainians to see what they can do with these resources but the awful truth is that ukrainians need to start showing some victories on the battlefield now i'm not saying now i'm saying they just need to do it before we will see significant increase in support for ukraine major part is that we should not start raising expectations beforehand. We should not start saying, oh my God, 2025, Ukraine totally is going to go uh, counterattack Russia, going to wipe, throw Russia out of their lands. This was the issue with the initial Ukrainian counteroffensive. It should not be again. We should learn from this. Don't raise expectations. Let Ukrainian command do what Ukrainian command command must do let them figure it out the pressure is on them they need to mobilize they need to get more people they need to get that equipment and weapons sent to them and they need to make sure that they use it and they use it at the right time czech president peter powell big friend of ukraine said it on the summer offensive last year he said it that ukraine will have one shot one shot at the offensive so they should not take their chances the fact that we're now kind of seeing that maybe, maybe there is going to be some goodwill enough for Ukraine to get more resources to do some kind of another offensive is a big success by the President Zelensky and Ukrainian team and, and a lot of people, including this channel and you guys as well, that have been bothering their politicians to support Ukraine. But Ukrainians must do this right and they need to make sure that they are single-minded about getting results on the table. It's an awful truth, but that's how it is. And for us, the only thing we can do is we need to continue supporting Ukraine. We need to continue doing our best to make sure that Ukraine has the most resources possible for when they finally go through. What we shouldn't do is put pressure on them or draw false narratives or false expectations beforehand. I hope it is clear. I hope we can deliver the message. Guys, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to the moderating team. Slava Ukraini, guys. And I'll see you next time.